The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. I'm Tommy O'Brien. Tom's going to be joining us after the first break. Checking in on markets. We got a positive start to Friday trading. Options expiration as well. Uh, S&P futures, excuse me, up about nine points right now, trading at 3105. We get the Nasdaq up 33 points, trading at 8512. Dow Jones positive by 88 points, trading 27,870. Ten-year yield, 1.83 percent, getting a little bit of dollar weakness. Dollar index trading right at 98, down about 17 ticks. Oil contract up about seven pennies. Oil's had some volatility. We'll jump over to that chart in a moment. And gold contract down about seven dollars at 14.65. Gold pretty much right where we started the week. We'll start things off. We'll jump over to the charts, jump through the indices. We'll start it off with the Dow. As I mentioned in the update, a little bit of a sell-off on the opening bell. There's your 930 bar. We came into that bar at about 27,865. Only about 35 points off that level right now. NASDAQ 100, a little bit of a sell-off as well, currently trading at 82.93, about 20 points off the level we were at coming into the opening bell of 83.16. There's your S&P 500. You can see when the market opened, a little bit of a sell-off from 31.10. We're about six points below that level, trading 31.04. There's your crude oil market. Crude right now showing just almost within 10 pennies of where we started the day in terms of last night. But man, oh man, we had quite a sell. Down to 5 a.m., $56.50. We're now back above $57, the price of December crude. And the gold contract, $14.67.53. And as I mentioned, a little bit of dollar weakness, euro strength, euro trading $110.49. In terms of the retail number, the number that the economy, in terms of what we had been waiting for for economic news this morning, 8.30 a.m., we get retail sales and we get a rebound, but big ticket purchases drop. So the Commerce Department saying on Friday, retail sales increasing 0.3% last month, lifted by motor vehicle purchases and higher gasoline prices. September's 0.3% drop was the first decline in seven months, so a little bit of a rebound there. Excuse me, consumers cut back on purchases of big ticket household items and clothing, which could temper expectations for a strong holiday shopping season. So the sales rebounded in October, but consumers cut back on purchases of big ticket household items and clothing. The Commerce Department said on Friday, the 3% increase last month, lifted by motor vehicle purchase and higher gas, reversing that unrevised 0.3% drop in September. That was the first decline in seven months. Economists had been looking for about 0.2% in October. Compared to October last year, retail sales advanced 3.1%. Excuse me. So here's where we get into it. Excluding automobiles, gasoline, building materials, and food, Retail sales increased 0.3% last month. Data for September was revised lower to show a so-called core retail sales slipping 0.1% instead of being unchanged. Core retail sales correspond most closely with the consumer spending component of the GDP. Jumping over to what else we have going on in terms of news out there, it is still earnings season and JCPenney. We'll jump over to their chart in a moment. They reported on Friday a smaller quarterly loss as the embattled retailer benefited from lower marketing expenses and an increase in in-store and online selling margin, sending its shares up 10%. They were up even more than that at one point. 117-year-old retailer said net loss. It's pretty remarkable when you come out and you lose almost $100 million in 90 days, and the market says we're going up 10%. Net loss narrowed to $93 million, or $0.29 cents a share in the third quarter, ended November 2nd, from $151 million a year earlier. JCPenney really trying to turn things around. They also raised its forecast for adjusted earnings before interest tax, depreciation, and amortization, EBITDA, for the rest of the year to exceed $475 million compared to its prior outlook of $440 to $475. To jump over to those shares as we jump across the stories this morning, JCP. Up about 8%, so man, oh man, talk about pairing some of those gains. You closed yesterday, where were we? So we're up only about 9 pennies right now. You closed at about 110. We were up to 137, and this is what I love. Thinkorswim, their partner, of course, 
you can see exactly when the conference call started, folks. It starts at 8.30. The shares were trading at 1.30. I'm not sure what they had to say on that conference call, but some of the euphoria about the numbers, which were released at 7.30, market shoots up to 137. Whether it's the CEO or who was on that conference call, they, they start getting asked some questions. They start putting out some more information. The market goes from 130 to 118 right now. Still, though, JCPenney up about 7.3%. Keep in mind, they lost $100 million in 90 days, almost $92 million. So, yeah, their turnaround, they're saying it's on track, but they still got some work to do. Jumping over to other stories, we had talked about it before. Under Armour in the news for some accounting questions. The news breaks about a couple weeks ago that the Justice Department investigating their accounting practices. This on the heels of their founder and CEO stepping down a few weeks before that. You have Kevin Plank, and uh, now it comes out that some of the details. Reportedly borrowed business from future quarters in 2016. That's three years ago. It'll be interesting to see as this gets reported how long people knew about this. Anytime you have a CEO and a founder stepping down for the company he founded, and a few weeks later it comes out that the Justice Department, not just the SEC, the Justice Department investigating the company for accounting practices, which is there's nothing more core to your business than telling the market how much money you're making or losing. And it goes back to 2016, borrowed business from future quarters to hide slowing demand in 2016. We'll pull up their chart in a moment because, man, oh, man, when you see how bad things were in 2016, let alone if they were fixing the numbers, Department of Justice, SEC, had been investigating the Baltimore-based company. person familiar with the matter told the journal that federal investigators are examining emails that show the founder and CEO knew about the efforts. Again, you know. It wasn't reported that he knew about it at the time, but any time, the timing of things, pretty coincidental, and coincidences aren't too coincidental sometimes. The two investigations were confirmed by Under Armour in early November, but the company has said it's been cooperating with investigators since July of 2017. In 2016, Under Armour leaned on retailers to take goods early from executives in sales, logistics, merchandising, and finance, told the journal. Sportswear intended for factory stores would be sent to off-price chains in order to book sales in the final days of a quarter. Some of the executives told the journal that such moves were common in the retail industry. Well, if they're so common, why is the Justice Department looking into what they're doing? A person familiar with the matter told the journal that federal investigators are examining emails that show their founder and CEO knew about the efforts. He stepped down. Uh, no, it's even he, so he's stepping down as of January 1st, but will re remain as executive chairman. We'll see if that is how things play out. And to see how the shares are trading this morning, they weren't too moved pre-market. And look at that, not bad. The stock's up 8 tenths percent when you get news like that. Uh, so not really hitting Under Armour shares this morning just yet. Jumping over to other stories, Warren Buffett taking a stake in RH, formerly known as Restoration Hardware. So Buffett's conglomerate also added a new investment in Occidental Petroleum worth about $332 million decreased its stake in Wells Fargo by 7.7% to 378 million shares, quite a position still. So to dig into it, RH shares surged this morning. We'll pull up that chart in a moment. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway revealed it owned 1.2 million shares of the furniture retailer. And if you haven't been in a restoration hardware store, folks, check it out. I'm not sure you want to spend the money that they want for their furniture, but it is quite a store that they do it up. And on the heels of Warren Buffett investing, up 5.35%, but man, they're already off about eight bucks from that high this morning. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Tom and Tommy O'Brien, we do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here on a Friday. Last night, we hit all-time highs. This morning, we hit all-time highs. Didn't you hear, man? Kudlow said the trade deal. It's oh, happening. It's I, right there, man. Yeah, Trump sent them out there. You gotta keep it it's going, It's pretty good Larry. when you got the, the king cheerleader Trump, and you got the cheerleaders underneath them, and the market's just like, oh, oh, they said it's going to happen. And every time you it's, get material facts, um, but... You know, hey, higher territory. It, it is go. what it is. It is. Exactly. exactly. Listen, you know, this morning when I woke up, folks, is that the, if you, Dave White talks about this a lot, The Remnants of a Stock Operator, right? It's one of the best books out there. If you've never got it, get it. And this is almost like the 1930s. And what the 1930s was is that you know, the market, basically, you'd have operators moving the market on a continual basis. And, you know, that when I just saw Cudla last night saying, the, the, the strokes are getting shorter. That was, that was the quote inside the thing. Uh, guess what, folks? You believe that, you believe anything, you know? But this is a, we get a long road to go. Yeah. Hey, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll see, we'll see what shakes out. Yeah. The, um, so I heard you talking about Under Armour, right? Oh, boy. Yeah. So they've been cooking their books for a while. At They're least, caught. at least 2016, it seems like, since yeah. then. And, you know, that's how deviant the market is. So what did they do? Did they, uh, let's see if we can go further back. I was trying to see, did they do something that they, they didn't go public then, right? When did they, couldn't pull the, yeah, for some reason, no, okay. Well, there's, so this is intriguing at least. We go back to April of 2016, right? 46 bucks. You're at 45 bucks. Right. And that is when they talk about that they were doing these things. Okay, so they're holding the stock up. Yeah. They're borrowing from future quarters. Right. Well, look at the future quarters they were borrowing from. Yep. It all came to roost. They couldn't right. hide the money, you know, right. uh, for that All long. the inventory, no. exactly. Right, exactly. so they bought about a 10 bucks. Um, and this is where, you know, it should be criminal, man. You have people putting their money in a oh, stock yeah. at $45, and you take over 75% of that money from them by hiding right. the, the real numbers of your, of your corporation, you know? Um, the, the sad thing is in the equity markets, I'd say is that after the debacle of 2007, 2008, 
these CEOs knows that, you know, guess what? If no one went to jail then, no one's going to go to jail for a, a long period of time. I, okay? I agree, you know, um, you, know. you know, and I hope that's not the case, though. Oh, I agree. Listen, I can it say. shouldn't be. I, I, there's no doubt, man. It's, it's a cut and dry deal, but, we, you know, we know what happened. Just it's, jumping over the article, you know, it's not just the SEC. you got the Justice Department, all right? right? So that's a different deal off the bat. And um, the news this morning saying that uh, emails show that the CEO and founder knew about the efforts. And not a coincidence that he just stepped down and that I guess that step right. down is effective January 1st. So he's, Evidently he's still, they knew all this was going to come out now. Of course. Yeah, I mean, they, right. they were aware of this since 2017, I think they said, if we scroll up. Yeah, cooperating with investigators <laughs> since July of 2017. Um, so that's right, because that's the one they, they come out. They, they've been under investigation for two years, and they just came out with it. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's, and the CEO right. had stepped down a few right. weeks before that. These are just some of the actual details finally coming out that, right. yeah, it's not a coincidence. Of course he knew. And, and something like this, so this is, I believe, a Wall Street Journal article. Yeah, so they're breaking. That came out yesterday. And, um, you know, this is the type of deal that you probably have the journal contacting, and I'm just speculating. You probably have the journal contacting the company yeah. saying, listen, we're coming with this news you got to give us a quote or not. Right. And the CEO says, man, I'm, you know, I might yeah. as well step down because um, gotta get out of town. the heat I'm going to face is not going to be good for the company, let alone if he's going to be facing potential criminal charges, which he should if that's how it comes out, folks. You can't just be fixing the books, you know, taking investors' money, um, especially Pretty. when they have, they have share interests. You know, it's, it's straight oh, out it's, robbery, let yeah. alone, you know. Right. Yeah. No doubt about yeah. it. Dow, Dow's up 121, Nasdaq's up 45, S&P's up 11 and a half. So uh, let's go see what did the S&P hit out here this morning. I know, right at about thirty-one ten, I think thirty-one eleven. We were right up near that high. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, thirty-one eleven fifty. So you hit it last night. Uh, that was uh, back it up one. Is that was that two o'clock in the morning? Yeah. You know, there it is. That's nine nine fifty. Oh look at that is the high too. Yep. And then it tried to get, get it tried to get there this morning. We <laughs> missed it by. Back up to the last spot, too, just to make sure. Just by 25. Yep, by 0 0.25. 31.11.25, 31.11.50 yeah. at 9. But guess what, man? We're three points away right now. Right. Give it a few minutes. That was uh, uh, AMRN. So I saw this. Yeah, yeah, so this is interesting. You know what's interesting about this? I was reading about this last night, too, is that this is all about fish oil. And that's what, the, the, you know, that's the one of the main ingredients inside of this, whatever way that they, they do okay. it. But it was a 16 to 0 uh, vote. Okay, you know, that they so their could, drug got approved. Why don't the, we pull up the news? Because we well, got a call it, about this yesterday, yeah, right? And they, I know they, that... Yeah, they still have to go till December something Okay. the FDA. But it was 16 to 0 that they think that they should uh, expand on the label, meaning yeah. that, you know... Uh, and that's where, for, for those, you know, the drug's label, that's what you're allowed to market for you right. know it's still people might use those drugs for those things but the ability to literally market for it Different is a big game. is yeah. a big thing so unanimous panel backing that's what they're saying to yeah. expand the label for their heart drug Besepa sparked drug debate across wall street as analyst investors weighed whether the drug could be sold to as many as 15 million americans uh the divide comes as members of the advisory panel to the u.s Food and Drug Administration offered different opinions when it came to specific rep recommendations according to an analyst I don't know what the differences are if there's a 16 to 0, you know, I know, vote. I know. And uh, potential billions in sales. Um, and of course, the stock halted yesterday just yeah. awaiting that decision. So they do get a unanimous approval and the stock trades higher. Let's see what some of this said. With unanimously favored response for label expansion, question moves to which patients make it on label, with 10 of 16 docs voting in favor of both. I wonder how that works. So, authors. Sclerotic, cardiovascular disease groups, maybe? Roth highlighted that some committee members were caught up in the analysis that showed a 12% rel relative cardiovascular, I'm guessing, CV risk reduction without significant benefit for patients who had not had something like a heart attack. Counted 10 of the 10, 16 panelists who were receptive to label expansion, including primary and secondary prevention patients. So I wonder if that's the you know, primary and secondary, what kind of a patient you are. They're yeah. going to expand it, but expand it for who? Maybe you need to be in not more dire, but yes. something like that. Right. Um, with the six others wanting the drugs labeled to include patients who have had a stroke. So there you go. It needs to be more extreme. Okay. So 10 of the 16 wanted to go to primary and secondary, and the six others saying they really only want to offer it to people who have already had that type of a, an, an event. But stock trades higher, and... Um, 
I mean, hopefully, just for the benefit of everybody out there. The caller yesterday had a great yeah. personal experience story with oh. uh, someone in their life Huge. helping. So, you know, beyond yeah. the money of things, that's good news. Triglycerides. Now I know what triglycerides are, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Totally. We were looking it up yesterday, even at the break. What are you talking about? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, you had, uh, this one's really interesting. Uh, Warren Buffett getting into uh, yeah. restoration hardware at highs, mind you. I okay? know. Um, and, you know, What's intriguing here is that, you know, does, well, that's saying he's bullish in the housing business. That's for sure. I mean, restoration hardware is so expensive. It's, it's amazing. Did you hear me saying at the end of that, if you haven't been in a store, <laughs> I'm not sure you want to spend the money for what they're offering, that's, that's, but go check it out because it's an experience, man. It's, it, there is no doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt. You know, so we're, he evidently must think that the interest rates are going to stay low. I mean, you know, he has Mohawk Carpet, which, you know, he has the he has the largest. Uh, okay. He owns Mohawk, which is, the, of course, the flooring business, the carpet business, all of that. It's one of the biggest floors. He owns the largest uh, maker of mobile homes. Yeah. You know, and so inside his portfolio, it's like, sure. okay, does he know that this is still cash flowing? When I saw yeah. that one, I was thinking maybe he's bullish on high end. Versus anything. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30 day free trial. Every morning by 9 30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's up 122, Nasdaq's up 45, S&P's up 12 and a half. And, you know, the market today, folks, is going to have a shot that, to get away from the uh, trade that we've been in now for seven days. 
So, you know, this could be a big day. I mean, that's the, that's the reality. You know, we'll, we'll see whether it can hold tight here. But, you know, we go back seven, eight days trading in the same zone. The further this gets away from, like, uh, even, what, 3,097, you know, bottom yeah. line would say, I mean, there's no volume, but the bottom line that's saying that, it's hey, guess what? It's been quite a run since yeah. October 10th, man. Right. 2881 up to above 3100 and just, like, nonstop. Right. Yeah. Apple. Let's go over to Apple because we know that, uh, you know, bottom line is one of the Tigers is saying it's been a steep run. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. <laughs> this is, the, you're looking at a six-month chart, which is just. Oh, I was going to even go back further, but go ahead. We'll keep that. It's amazing, it's right? Just, it, it keeps it, I think going. it's Let's, 175 to 231. Because even the turnaround, wait till you see just, uh, let's go two years on daily. We'll keep it. Because, man, that December low, 142 to 264. Talking about 120 bucks, it's almost 100 percent. Yeah, on a company right. like Apple. Right. Yeah. It's there's no doubt that that is that is one monster move. Um, and hey, we'll we'll see whether we can basically hang up here. Uh, AMAT came out with numbers last night. Now this is a big deal. So, AMAT folks, okay, I haven't been able to find yet their back orders, but you know they had good numbers, um, and the back orders are important because what happens is that. The semiconductor business in general, like if you're the CEO of Intel, what happens is that you're buying all this equipment off AMAT, but it takes so long to make a plant that you're like ahead two years. Okay. So their back orders are really huge. And this is saying that, guess what? This is saying that we're, we're going to be using chips on everything. And we know we are, but yeah. that, that's what that's saying, you know, because... And this it, one, more than 100% yeah. in that December low, man. Yeah. Just huge you know, ones. So... You know, we know that chips are driving everything right now. I mean, when you go back 15 years, they were always saying that, you know, we're going to have chips everywhere. But we really do have chips everywhere now. Yeah. That, that's the, the, it's actually happening right now, you know. So, so jumping over to Uber, all right? Oh, Can we talk about this for a moment? Because yeah. it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, man. Whether you have an opinion or not, I'm not sure how's, how it's going to play out. Um, Uber getting a lot of tough press lately in terms of their founder, Kalanicki, or Kalanick, uh, mm -hmm. selling a lot of shares, right? The lockup expiring, that whole deal going on. But it'd be interesting to see how this plays out. I mean, you know, are, are there employees, contractors, or are there employees, right? Because right. that's going to be the right. heart of this. And you have New Jersey saying, you know, they're, they're employees, and they're not contractors, right. you know? And they're going to try to collect a $650 million bill, folks. Yeah. Off them for not basically... Uh, yeah, corporate payroll taxes. Showing them as an right? as a, as a employee versus a contractor. Yeah. Right. Um, so a state-by-state -state dismantling of that model could reverberate across the gig economy and have a staggering impact on Uber's bottom line. The company's general and administrative cost, 18% of sales already are much higher than other large tech businesses. According to a Bloomberg intelligence analysis, Uber's cost per driver and those of rideshare competitors Lyft could jump by more than 20% if they're forced to reclassify workers as employees. New Jersey recently hit Uber with a $650 million bill for unpaid unemployment and temporary disability benefits taxes. The company is still fighting a possible similar assessment across the Hudson River in New York, where the state labor department also has determined that drivers the company connects with customers are Uber employees. Yeah, so the tax questions, just spotlight. I mean, you know, we've talked about it. I think Uber's going to be around. It's a risk that you should be quantifying, though, right. if you are in that equity. Right. Um, because, you know, you may, you may not be a fan of taxes, folks, but taxes get things done. And if companies just start paying no taxes on corporate, you know, payroll taxes, that's got to come from somewhere or there's got to be cuts across the board. And uh, companies are now having workforces that are hundreds of thousands of employees. Right. And they say right. that they don't have any employees, you know. Right. So be aware of the ramifications right. if that becomes a, a nationwide and, and, phenomenon. And Yeah, and so the... The definition of an employee, this is where this is, this is going to be in court for a long time. Yes. You know, because what happens, folks, is that if you have a contract employee, you cannot tell a contract employee what to do. Meaning that I can't say to your contract employee, I can't say, you have to be in from 9 to 5. Right. Okay? You know, so... There's a lot it, of nuances it, in this, there right? Is. No, no, there that, is. That's, my point. that's why I say. That's why the lawyers are going to go black. That's why I say it is. You know what I mean? And there, that's why I don't think, there, even there, if it's settled, no it doubt. might become... Relitigated, yeah. Um, awesome. yeah. It, 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 it'll be a awesome. constant battle, no oh, matter which side. I think um, it won't be settled forever because it is so closely skewed to yes. the middle of that uh, 
and quali every, qualification. And every corporation would love to say that everyone is a contract employee. And that's why I say that's where right. we're going. You know, right. people are able to work remotely from every facet of what they do. Right. So what is stopping companies from just hiring, firing, allowing workers to work when they want, work when they don't. Everybody's replaceable. Everybody works the yeah. hours they want. And guess what? Everybody becomes a contract employee. And then there's no more any type of corporate taxes that go along with employee taxes, which are really high. I get that, right? We get that. Run a business. We get it. Right. But that's a substantial amount Tommy's of taxes. About, you're talking about matching it. So what yeah. happens, folks, you're going to match it. You know, the, when you're an employee, that comes out, and then the employer has to match it, which, you know, turns into big money. Yes. Uh, every week. You know what I mean? Say match it. Wait. Match the taxes. That, yeah. that the tax that you not not your FICO, okay, but the tax yes. that you take out. Yeah. Meaning the social, yes. the Medicaid. Right. Uh, you know, we match it. Right. The There's a lot of payroll taxes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. They just do away with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So. Gold. Let's go over to the gold market. See what we got. We got a Friday inside the gold market, and it's holding up. So. Coming into the weekend, it's not a bad deal. You know, we got a low out there, 1462 today. You're 1468. I like how it's set up, man. Let's, you know, on the weekends, uh, particularly inside the metals market, that's when they can take that thing south in about uh, two seconds. And when they take it south, man, they really like to take it south. The dollar, uh, bottom line, that has pressure on the way down. Now, we haven't seen that for a while. You know, yesterday you saw some selling in the dollar. Today you get some selling in the dollar. It's, all, it's going to be all about the S&P today and the NASDAQ and, you know, can, can it hold price, yeah. you know? Yeah, And uh, if it does hold price, guess what? Let's say next week can go higher. It doesn't hold price at these highs. People are going to be like, you know, like, okay, you know. It seems like the market's shaking everything off, though. Like, and I agree, man. That's, that's the bottom line. I mean, we got factual <laughs> news reported that right. China doesn't want to buy soybeans. Right. Market shakes it off. And then Cudlow just says, don't worry, everything's cool. Yeah. Right. So, Wait, weigh the two of those, right? Which one should have more weighting? Right. But the market's at all-time highs. So as you say, it shakes it, it off, man. It shakes it off. Uh, how about Hong Kong? Well, this, hopefully uh, this, this doesn't continue to persist, man, because yeah. the violence. And now you have uh, Hong Kong's number two official promised more decisive measures. Not sure what that means, but to halt the protest violence as the financial fa uh, center, excuse me, faced another weekend of unrest after five straight days of roadblocks, vandalism, and spontaneous marches. So Chief Secretary Matthew Chung maybe outlined the plans hours after city officials confirmed that Hong Kong was heading toward its first annual recession in a decade. President Xi had said that bringing the violence to an end is Hong Kong's most urgent task. Well, a scuffle involving the city's justice secretary and the second pro protest-related death in a week heightened tensions. Right, and that secretary, that, that was in London. They, what happened is that yesterday they're doing a deal in London. Okay. And she basically got rousted in London. You know, and it's so, scary stuff. Right. It's, it's, it's heavy. Some of the videos coming out there, um, scary stuff. You, you just, know? I, I don't see a way that they're going to stop. It. That's what worries me the most as right. well. You right. know, when you can't envision an end to things, right. that gets scary. Right. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
from all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up uh, 113. NASDAQ up 40. S&P is up 11. And you got to see this video, folks. You haven't seen it. Tommy was just showing it to me. Uh, and the thing is so bizarre. There's a couple of different things that are bizarre about this. But when, you, when you're watching it, I want you to understand that, you know. I'm not sure if the video is going to play on here. But oh, they can, they can oh, look it up okay. themselves. They can find it. So it is everywhere you, this you, morning. You get the Cleveland Browns defensive end hits the Pittsburgh quarterback with his helmet. Guess what, folks? Cleveland was winning. This yeah. is even more bizarre. Okay, so there's a quick snapshot. It was the end of the game. You had Cleveland winning 21-7. Usually it's the losing team that gets yeah. really chippy, right? Yeah. And it was kind of the losing team that got a little chippy. So you had the quarterback getting a little bit chippy. He okay. gets sacked. Yeah. He doesn't like the way he gets sacked. Yeah. He kind of shoves the Cleveland guy's helmet. It's football. These things are standard stuff, all right? Yeah. He might have gotten a penalty. And uh, for those that didn't see it, and it is everywhere. This is on the front page of CNBC, okay? You don't normally get Thursday no. Night Football on the front page of CNBC. And you have uh, Garrett, who's the defender, rips off his helmet and then slams it right over the guy's head right. without a helmet. you got to uh, see this video, folks. It's it's really remarkable. And uh, let's well, see if it fires And what's up. intriguing that, you know, uh, if, in fact, you know, we'll see whether the guy gets charges. But the, the bottom line, if this happened outside the football field, he'd be charged with assault in a yeah. second. Yeah, and I, I heard mean, commentators this how, morning. You see how hard... He he basically whacks this guy. Yeah, it's pretty incredible, man. You know, it's it's uh, just because you're on a football field, man. You can't assault people with a deadly weapon. He takes his helmet. Look at this. Yeah. Rips it off, and then in one fell swoop, windmills it right it. into his head. That's and a windmill. There's too. there's a lot of thank, articles. Thank God he's got a couple other people on the yeah. other team helping him. And now, I think he just kind of not got lucky, right? But it didn't catch a direct blow the right. way, and not um, just remarkable stuff, man. The NFL. And there it is. We'll get the full. The NFL, dangerous enough. Um, yeah. And, and what's time. really wild is that the numbers came out yesterday um, from the um, TV, and the NFL numbers are up huge. Yeah. Okay. You can't beat the NFL. Um, you, well, they, they, they're, they're up huge from last year. So, I mean, I don't think this, this is not going to help them. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That the uh, bottom line, they were making a comeback in a huge way. Um, yeah. I heard somebody else say, actually, though, guess what? Everybody's talking about the NFL this morning, aren't they? Oh, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no such thing as bad publicity to a certain point. Um, but hopefully, because that's not about the NFL, man. No. They had even to, um, that guy's jacked up, man. to the to the Cleveland quarterback's credit, Baker Mayfield. Yeah. He came out, didn't defend the guy in an instant and said that, you know, we can't be having that type of stuff. Usually you right. see their, you know, he's their, he's his quarterback. He had his own teammates coming out Good. and saying, you know, um, I'm, I'm not sure the quote, but not defending him as you, you can't defend yeah, that because, you know, close. there's people's lives. That, that guy could have 
I mean, you can kill somebody like that. Not even exaggerate. Big time. Yeah. Some of the higher volume equities out here today. You got Roku on the run again. That's up six dollars, trading one fifty four. You have uh, Apple up a buck thirty six. Micron's up one sixteen. How about Nvidia? Can we? We jumped NVDA, into. Yes. Um, let's just jump to the news if we could. They. Yeah. Well, you're gonna have to back it up more. I clicked on the article before. Nvidia. Yeah. They came out with earnings last night, right? Kind of yeah. in the chip sector as well. Um, but let's see what we got going on on their news. So, while well, they're saying rose modestly in pre-market, but we can see that rise did not hold. They're down about 3.5% right now. They reported third quarter results, beat expectations, putting the company on a firmer foundation. Now, this is interesting, reading an article at 7.23 this morning. Right. And the market is disagreeing with a lot of the analysis that was taken in here. While the company gave a revenue out outlook, well, there you go, slightly below consensus, et consensus estimates. Yeah, they may have brushed it off at 7.30, but they're not brushing it off at 10.30. Right. A number of firms raised their price target, bringing the average to about 220 from just over 200. Concerns over NVIDIA, NVIDIA's valuation and near-term growth trends, but its biggest supporters remain strongly optimistic. Piper Jaffrey wrote that it represents an incredible opportunity to play the mega trends of data center gaming and autonomous driving. I wonder how many shares they own. Um, shares were up about 0.6%. And let's just see. I'll pull up the Thinkorswim platform, and let's see what uh, they had going on. Dig down a little bit closer to see the pre-market action on a five-minute. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's that's a little bit of volatility, man. Ooh. So you, you get the spike up to 218. Now, this is a five-minute bar, so this bar, they were really... That was after the, when they came out with the numbers yeah. last night. So yeah. they were lost on where to, what to do with these numbers initially. Um, but even this morning, man, you go from 210, yep. reach a low of 264, 204, 16. Uh, jumping around a bit, though, J.C. Penney, right, out yeah. with their earnings. So check out that. Talk, talk about pairing some of your gains, right? Yeah. And what I love again, think or swim. Look at when the conference call started. They were trading at 1:30. Conference call begins right at 8:30. And, that, with... and that's a dollar 30, folks. <laughs> yeah, they come out with the earnings at 7:30 this morning. Stock trades all the way up to a buck 37. They closed at a buck 10 yesterday. Huge, right. huge jump. Right. Uh, and then the conference call begins, and some of that waned. They still lost, I believe, 92 million dollars in the quarter, which the market said was maybe an indication. I think they had lost 150 the previous okay. or something like that. But, you know, I said in one of the updates or something, I said, folks, they, they lost more than a million dollars a day, and, and the market just popped them 20%. Now, yeah, that's, you know, on the heels of a turnaround, and that's what's happening. But guess what? The, the, the participants kind of had the same sentiment, I yeah. think, at some point. And said, yeah, we'll trade you up a bit. We'll trade you up five or six pennies. But you better stop burning a million dollars a day if we're going to see a turnaround here. Pretty intense, man. Yeah. There's no, there's no doubt. The, yeah. uh, <laughs> that's... That is about as heavy as you I can. I agree, man. You know. So let's go look at Walmart. So Walmart yeah. gave everything up yesterday. They sure did, man. You know? Talk about giving it up as well. Yeah. And they're giving it up again today. Look right. at that bar. Wow. Yeah, that's a big number. Look right. at that volume yesterday. 125, I think, was the number out here yesterday. Yeah, 125.38. Yeah. Sold it off all day. And it looks to me, now what's going to be interesting with Walmart, folks, is that this very well could be a complex ABC up. So... The way that would work, if that's the case, you, you know, you, you get to a higher high. You can see this on a weekly. It took everything out, right? Yep. And if that's the case, you can see it. I suspect it would first trade down to like the 114 area. Okay. And you know, we'll see where this shakes out. But when when these play out like this, they they're pretty intriguing. Meaning that if we pull back next week and the volume is light and you're going to another breakout area, yeah, uh, then you get something to, to aim for. Can we see if there's some analysis of what, what really paired back all of that? Um, yeah, there's so much news out on them to yeah. fight. So here Everyone we go. Everyone lifted their price targets. Here we go. They're poking, they're poking holes in yeah. the earnings. Uh, Match sales growth estimates raised its forecast and watched its shares drift lower midday trading. Analysts picked apart the numbers. Uh, they hit a record high. What changed after all the key gauge of same-store sales? was in line with expectations. Both of the numbers of customers and the size of their average orders were up, but concern, concerns remain, including persistent weakness. I'd heard this at Sam's Club. Now, I was talking to you about my experience. I was at Sam's Club Sunday. There were 20 people in line that had already paid and were just waiting to get out of the store, um, which lacks a leader, the high cost of new initiatives, and slow progress in diversifying sales beyond groceries. Walmart also kept, also kept its sales guidance intact, disappointing some analysts. So I guess that's the negative analysis if you want to get into it. Um, let's check out Target, too, right? Because that was 
up yesterday, I think, kind of on the heels of that. Let's see how they're, and they're extending it again, man. Yeah. So look at that. You have Target that was trading at about 108.80 about. Um, we're up three and a half. What's going to what's gonna happen when people wake up and the stocks are not up every single day? <laughs> no, we don't have to worry about that, man. <laughs> New highs every day. That's, that's... You sent me that article last week, right? It was like 25 consecutive times or something. The market goes down. Yes. Even on the days when it goes down, which doesn't happen often lately. That's right. The very next day it goes back up. Yep. Yep. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Dow. Dow is up 121. Nasdaq's up 44. S&P's up 12 and a half. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And folks, as you come over to our website at TFNN, you're going to see right under featured content, our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. He is going to be doing a webinar for subscribers, and it's going to be this coming Tuesday, which is November 19th. Check it out, folks, 5 to 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. And it's real easy to get into this webinar. You just come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to subscribe to Basil's newsletter. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You're going to get a great newsletter. You're going to get a great work. Uh, webinar. That's and right. Yeah. So he's going to be talking about a comprehensive review of the Chapman Wave techniques and market outlook ahead for 2020, which is amazing, man. What's it, 40, 50 days away from us? Uh, you ready for New Year's? You ready for Thanksgiving? I you ready am, for Christmas? I'm ready. I can't wait to have you, a turkey, you, too. You, you, I, you're I shopping really for Santa Claus yet? Let's go. Stuffing, That's potatoes, right. gravy. Bring it on. Oh. I'm ready, man. 
Uh, so Basil's got some great winners this year, and he's just going to kind of be walking his subscribers through the process he's using as he's picking out those winners he's had this year, 15 to 30% winners by request from his subscribers, talking about a review of the techniques that helped in their successful analysis. You get access to Basil's service. He's got updates out there every morning, at least one over the weekend. And what you also gain access, I just pulled up, you gain access to his archive webinars. Now, if you right. can't attend live, this is exactly what you'll gain access to. The next day, you'll gain access to the archive webinar, 90 minutes. Basil's, this is, this is the subscriber area, okay? This is what right. subscribers gain access to. You can see, you know, he's got a 60-minute webinar in here on terms of what stocks can lead the market higher after this correction is completed. That seems like that would have been a beneficial one to attend oh, to, yeah. considering where we're at. Yeah. Uh, he's got the Tide 90-minute webinar back from June. So you gain immediate access. Sign up today. You can check that out over the weekend. Get ready for that ARCA uh, webinar on Tuesday. I love it. Yes. Stay right there, folks. We've got Think of Swim coming up next. And we've got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave Wright. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Bam! Go get him, folks.